Up here for a reason, Dan. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> we got. Uh, were they in the pews? Uh -huh. Okay. I didn't notice. Huh. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Barnesville Baptist Church here in Maryland. It is a little cold today, so uh, you saw some snow flurries yesterday, and uh, but we're glad everybody's here. We're glad everyone's online watching us. Um, we're glad you could come and worship with us today. Um, some announcements. You see in your bulletin, the uh, April business meeting won't be on the 6th. It'll be on the 13th. Um, if you want to purchase Easter lilies, uh, contact Kitty Cooley. Or if, if need to, if online, you can, you can always contact the church too. And, and we'll get that information to Kitty. He's got the prices in there. Um, yeah, we're getting close to Easter. Um, couple weeks we'll be at Palm Sunday, uh, and then Good Friday service here at 7 o'clock on April 15th, um, and the uh, there's a note there in there about the Easter sunrise service, I know Danny was going to mention, he'll mention a little bit later, it won't be here, it's actually going to be on Sugarloaf, um, so they were able to get permission to do that. Um, we're collecting Annie Armstrong Easter offering, um, the envelopes are in your pews, I'll be setting it up online to this week to uh, be able to donate that online as an option also. Um, and on 20, April 23rd, we're having our rescheduled uh, Old Testament uh, teaching. So hopefully everybody can plan to be there. Um, and then on April 9th is the spring cleanup. Um, and Danny was going to talk about that and a couple other things. So. Well, good morning, church. It's good to see everybody. It's welcome everybody online. It's good to see the balcony full of children. Oh, Ellen, too. And uh, it's just good to see everybody today. Yesterday, we had a great time of fellowship at Mount um, Airy Bowling Lanes. We had 24 or 25 come out, and we had a great time of fellowship, um, and Christian fellowship. And it was just a great evening. Uh, we do thank the committees for that. Um, uh, yep, there's some pictures even had psychedelic lights going on. So uh, we really did, and that's a really good group. So we had a great group go and just had a great time of fellowship and enjoying each other and Christian fellowship. And more than that, I'm grateful that we were able to have Christian fellowship. Uh, that's the greatest thing about that. So we give God the praise. I do want to share a couple things really quickly. The uh, I got an email this week um, that Sugarloaf Mountain has agreed to allow us the community to come back on Easter morning for sunrise. So uh, they have asked us to be part of that um, service. So uh, I've uh, um, we're going to go to there for the sunrise service, as usually was our custom. Um, and we will uh, 6 a.m. is when they're going to start. And this last time we went, there was three, four hundred people there. Um, and I, I'm almost sure it's bring your own chair because uh, I'm actually, I'm sure of that. Um, so I would bring a blanket because it's usually freezing, um, by the way. But uh, that is a great time of sunrise service. We've had it here for the last two years. and It's wonderful. But on top of that mountain with all the brothers and sisters around you, it's, it's really a beautiful celebration of to start out Easter morning. And then at 8.45, next Sunday in your bulletin will be a flyer with all these dates and times for Easter. But next uh, Easter morning at 8.45, we're going to have an Easter morning breakfast right here. Um, we're going to have eggs, sausage, bacon, pancakes, rolls or biscuits, um, juice, home fries, donuts, and... No carb snacks. <laughs> I keep people. I thank you, church. I, I'm, I'm getting all. You know, there's so much. I'm not joking. So much good t 
tasting stuff out there now. And so, Jenna, I told Jenna as I talked, I was going to sneak a little bite here. But she told me not to leave it in my pants because it'll melt. So I'm going to put it right there. Um, but seriously, uh, uh, I have to tell you this very quickly. After church, Gene Bennett, I love you. After church last Sunday, Gene Bennett called me and said, I need to meet you on the parking lot. Sometimes that's someone tells you you got to meet you on the parking lot. You wonder about that. Uh, so Gene came up. I'm only joking. He had a really, really, really old belt hole puncher. I mean, his father had it. And he made me two new holes in my belt to save Cindy $38. Uh, but they're not $38 anymore, by the way. The bigger you get, the more they cost. Well, let me just tell you something. I told him he made the hole, and I said, he said, I'm going to make you another one. I said, no, 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 that, I'm, this hole's plenty. He made it like that much more. He said, give you something to work at. Do you know, last Friday, just a couple of days ago, I was doing a funeral service, a homecoming for two Christian husband and wife that passed away. And as I was standing there, I went in the back and I put it in that second new hole because I didn't, you know, you guys, you know, if I get embarrassed, you have to deal with it. But when you're with, you're with other people, and I, my first, the first thought was, go ahead, Gene Bennett, amen. So thank you for your prayers. Honestly, God is so good um, in everything we do. We had a great Sunday school. We just finished up the story of Joseph, um, lessons on Joseph, and I can't wait to the next uh, series. All right, let me finish why I started all this. Sunrise service will be at Sugarloaf Mountain, 6 a.m. They're going to start. I suggest you be there at 5 30, 20 of to get your parking and seats. And then at 8 45, downstairs in the fellowship hall, we'll have a nice breakfast. And then 9 35, Sunday school, 10 45, worship. Great way to do uh, Easter sun, uh, celebration. Now, the cleanup day. I really need you please to listen for a second. Um, we changed our cleanup day finally because it makes sense, thank you, Billy, to clean up before Easter instead of after Easter. And uh, so Stephanie has been, Runkles has been taking care of that front flower bed for a couple years. Health-wise, she has told me she cannot do that this year. I really would pray, ask you to pray for someone to take over the responsibility. That's the first thing people see when they pull up here. Um, that flower bed on cleanup day, we need some help this year. We really do. We have these two flower beds and that front flower bed that need to be de-weeded, de-raked, de-trashed, everything else, and then mulch, right, Billy? Um, uh, if we have time. The main thing is church. And uh, but uh, there's always time, but uh, the mulch will be here. But then we need someone to maintain them, right, Brother Bill? So if someone would like, to, Stephanie, hopefully next year can do it. Um, if someone, especially the front flower bed, if someone feels loves doing flowers and would love to take that responsibility over, she used to come once a week, water it, weed it, and whatever else might happen. Um, but right now they'd be clean. The other part of the work day besides normal thing, is these church windows really need to be cleaned inside and out. So there's some things that we all need to do to be ready for Easter to make God's house the best we can, and they're not even expensive. Amen? So if you, could, if you cannot make it Saturday the 9th, if you want to come and work on a flower bed, call, call one of us or just come do it. Um, clean it out. You don't have to work that Saturday. We can do it ahead of time, but the mulching will be done. For sure, that Saturday. So that's my spill, spiel, okay? So uh, please pray about doing your part there with that too. Nita, lead us in worship. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Here and online. As we come together to worship this morning, let us put our everything, our everything into the name of Jesus. Our cares, our concerns, our worries, our joys, our sorrows, our delights, our dreams, our failures, our ambitions, our everything. For in Jesus' name there is strength, there is power, there is hope to sustain our faith and our life in God, to help us overcome all of our obstacles we may face that come against us in glorifying and praising God to encourage us to grow deeper into the knowledge of God, 
For it's in Matthew 23, 39, tells us, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So join me as we sing this morning our call to worship, 325 in your hymnal, in the name of the Lord. We'll sing it through twice.
to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. Let us send out the light. Join me as we stand and sing 364. Send the light. Father, we do thank you for this day that you've given us and the opportunity to come worship. We thank you for the light of your son, Jesus. And we thank you for sending that light into this dark world, Lord. And as Christians and as followers and believers in you, Lord, help us to go spread that light and that good news to so many people who need this and need to hear about you and your love. Lord, we just thank you for all that you give us, all the blessings you bestow upon us. And Lord, we just ask to pray today as we focus on you, Lord, that we would just want to go out and honor you in all that we say and all that we do. Lord, we ask a blessing today on our nation and our world, Lord. We just lift up its people, lift up the people in Ukraine, Lord, as they struggle and are facing terrible um, things going happening to them as far as attacks and stuff, Lord. We just be with them. And watch over them. We know, we are, We have as Christians, we know that you are, are in control. We don't necessarily understand it or, or see it, but we know it's a fact, and we believe that, Lord. And we just ask your hand and your will to be done in this world. Lord, just be with us as we worship. Be with Pastor Danny as he brings your word, that we would grow in our understanding and love for you. We pray all these things the way your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in the responsive reading. It's an insert in your bulletins up on the on the wall and on on your screen at home. It comes from Isaiah chapter 57, Psalms 22, and the the fulfillment of that in Matthew 27. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers in silence. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. All those who see me ridicule me. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Thank you. you may be seated. Amen. It's good to read God's word. Amen. Amen. And it's just beautiful in every way. We just thank the Lord. It's now time for our offering. I do want to encourage everybody online. You're welcome to give online. To go to our website. You, you right hand corner is very easy to give. We just uh, the plates are right here, and we're going to be passing them around. And um, we just, if you want to mail in your offerings, you're welcome to do that. The envelopes aren't open if you mark in giving, and they're put right in the plate on Sunday mornings with all the others. It is good to be in God's house. It's good to see all of you. It's good to know that everyone's joining us online, and I pray you're ready to worship the risen Savior today. Amen? Amen. As we sing and read his word and worship through song and worship through his word. We just praise his name. So, uh, Eddie, you uh, ushers. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, awesome God, we thank you for this glorious day. We thank you for the many blessings on our home and our family. We thank you for the Barnfield Baptist Church and those people that are with us and those that are watching online. We thank you for Pastor Danny and Cindy. We thank you for every good and perfect gift that you've given us. Now, Father, we give back to you a portion of everything you've given us in our tithes and offerings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Jan. That was lovely. Please rise for our doxology. Thank you, Lord, for all things. Amen. It's now time for children's story. Children, you want to come on up? All of our children online, if you want to gather around. There's a few more coming down. A couple more coming. How's everybody? Doing good. Got any que- Anybody have any questions? <laughs> yes. Now I know who caught the biggest fish. <laughs> it's a forgery. <laughs> okay. Um, now I know how Danny feels when, at the last minute, what you wanted to talk about gets changed. Amen. <laughs> Mr. Luke just came down and gave me a note. I was talking to a friend, not talking, but messaging with a friend of mine in Cuba. And he's watching. So Amen. would everybody turn around and say, hi, Orlando. Hi, hi Orlando. <laughs> Let's say hi to our Pakistan church, too. Hi, hi Pakistan. <laughs> our sister church there. So I had this really cool lesson I was going to teach you about. And I had all the all colors and everything, but we're not going to do that. We're going to talk about how this church is reaching all around the world. Amen. Pakistan is all the way on the other side of the world, isn't it? And they don't even speak our language, but I'm sure they have people that translate in them. So, yes? Yep. Um, so my mom goes to grandpa's Okay. I can't have hear what she said, but whatever you said, thank you. <laughs> oh. Um. So now we have a friend in Cuba. I, well, Orlando's been my friend in Cuba. You ever meet a, you ever meet somebody and you just automatically like them? Well, that's what it is with Orlando, and he and I are friends. So I think I'm going to be able to go back back to see him in Cuba in, in all months of the work the, the year in August. It's hot down there. It's really hot, but I really would like to go see Orlando. And what what we're going to do is. Uh, bring some medicine to support the people in Cuba don't have a lot of money and the government doesn't have a lot of help to the people. So we're going to take medicines down there and food Amen. and, and uh, whatever, whatever we can. But isn't it cool that our church, through the ministry that we have with the uh, Facebook and the online, that we can reach basically all the way around the world. We can reach our whole country. We have people over in Texas. I think we have people in California. So we're doing what God has asked us to do. One of the last things Jesus said is, go and spread my word throughout the whole the whole earth. And that's what we're doing. And, and I'm just, I'm really proud, and we all should be proud that, that we're a small part of, of spreading God's word. Amen. And I'm going to catch the biggest fish. <laughs> Larry, just, just like, Larry, just like the song we just sang, send the light. Yeah, spread the light. Okay. All right. So sure. Nobody's got any questions. I got lots of answers. Yes, ma'am. My friend was in Cabo. In Cabo? Where's that? Mexico? Yeah. Oh, cool. Say hi to your friend. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I live in a hunting with my mom all my life. Oh, cool. I think you're embarrassing. Is that your sister? Yeah, yeah you're embarrassing your sister. That's all right. <laughs> That's what little sisters are for. Uh, Larry, Orlando says, praise the Lord and praise this wonderful church. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 
Cool. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I really am. When Luke gave me this, I was, we talked about it yesterday, but I wasn't. I wasn't sure if in Cuba they can they can get uh, Facebook, but evidently they can. So that's cool. That's just real, that's cool. All right, let's let's pray a little bit. Father, I ask you to bless these little ones, though they are such a che- treasure to us. Put a hedge of protection around them that they may grow and learn about you, and and, and eventually when it's time to make a decision to to accept Christ into a, into their lives. I ask you to bless them. Bless this day in our church. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. All right, Jody, you can stay here and, and for a minute because I know you want to hear the music. You'll go downstairs in a minute, just in a minute. We should have swapped that maybe <laughs> time-wise. Oh, very good, Larry, very good. God is so good. Again, anytime we share our talents, and part of our talents is, as we've been thanking the Lord, is our uh, media. And thank you, Luke, for all the hard work. And thank you, church. We're, we just this week are going to purchase another $900 piece of equipment so that we can send out this, the, the message even stronger um, in a better way. None of that is wasted. It's all part of the mission that God has for us. So thank you, everybody. But one of the greatest ways that we're blessed is when you share your talents. They were going to sing the other day, but they got snowed out. So I am glad they're singing today, and it's good to see Linda up and ready. And uh, we just, and Megan, and we just can't wait to see how God's going to bless us. Okay, children, you can go downstairs, but don't run Miss Linda over. <laughs> it's great to hear the feet of children, amen? Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to come and to worship you through song and reading your scriptures and sharing your testimonies. I thank you for who you are and all that you're doing in our lives. Thank you for the beautiful children. I thank you for the message that you laid on Larry's heart that gives a great, beautiful illustration to every child listening here and 
person and online, that your message goes out everywhere. If we just be faithful, if we'll just be obedient, you do the rest. I know they were encouraged to know, and they're going to be sharing that with others, that that your word is in Cuba and Pakistan and Texas and and, and, and California and, and as as they said, even where their relatives or friends are. Lord, your light needs to shine brighter now than ever before. May we be the instruments. May we have the privilege of serving you. Please use us in whatever way you can. I do pray for our brother in Cuba because I know that he is striving to serve you faithfully and I can't wait to Larry has the opportunity to go with the mission team. I thank you for that doors being open. I pray they remain open so that not only can Larry go and deliver me uh, medicine and vital uh, needed supplies, but I know they go from church to church and they encourage pastors and believers and your word goes out. I'm thankful that this small little church on the hill, you have chosen us to be a beacon around the world in our little way. May you always be pleased with us, Lord. And may we always be obedient and humble because we praise your name. And all of Barnesville Baptist Church said, Amen. Amen. Again, God is good. Amen. And all that he does. It doesn't take you long if you watch the news or listen to the radio to be reminded that there's evil everywhere. It doesn't take you long to realize how discouraged you can be in a matter of moments, when you look around and see how Satan seems to be having a field day. I believe that all of us need to be encouraged and to be reminded of the truth of Jesus Christ, the truth that all things are held together, seen, and he is sovereign God, that he provides all things, he protects in all ways, he intercedes in all ways. There's no coincidence today that we've been sistered up and partnered up with the church in Pakistan for, I know, at least two years now. I got an email from them this week, and we are praying. This is the reason I'm bringing this up. You know that money has been given to them for an orphanage, and that orphanage was backed by the government with no problem. The money came to support the majority of that mission work from Montgomery Baptist Association and the churches. And they were able to get the land, and they were able to acquire the building, they were able to open the offering, our, uh, orphanage, and they used that, as you know, also to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I got an email this week. They need your prayers. Satan wasn't going to let that stay long. They are still operating. <laughs> They're still sharing the gospel. They're still providing a vital need in Pakistan, but they're also under heavy attack for sharing the gospel. I want you to pray for them, please, so that Satan will be bound. I will tell you this, and I believe it with all my heart, soul, and mind. In his text, Pastor said, we will never stop sharing the gospel. That's the truth. You and I, the song said it so beautifully, we need to send the light, amen? The light of Jesus Christ. Folks, better days are ahead of us. As believers in Jesus Christ, we cannot get caught up in the evil that's all around us. We cannot ignore it, and we must do our part to make good and to bring good wherever we can. But you cannot be discouraged. You cannot be beaten. You cannot allow Satan to have a foothold in your life because of the evil all around. Because as a believer in Jesus Christ, better days are ahead of us. It might be until we get to heaven, but they're ahead of us. And God will provide in every way. One of the beautiful things I love about spring and Easter is honestly the fresh, beautiful newness all around. Amen? But you can't help but to notice the weeds that come along with that. I'm on my power swing the other day, and I look over to the hill, 
You know, that's a septic tank there. It kind of blows me away. That's where the flowers grow, but that's another story. And I'm looking over there, and all these green things are popping up, and I'm like, wow, it's getting ready. But guess what else is popping up everywhere? The little green things underneath them. And I thought to myself, isn't that a good picture of life? Amen? But let me just share one thing with you. When you pull weeds, when you get down and exercise, when you put some energy out there, it's good for your body. It's good for your soul. It's good for you to be in your hands in the dirt and the nature. So even weeds have a purpose. Amen? I don't like them, but they have a purpose. Everything in your life, everything in your life as a believer has a purpose. Find the good in it. Find the good in it. We were studying in Joseph in Sunday school today, and we summed it all up in a quick way. All the events that took place in Joseph's life, the coat, the brothers, the anger, the jealousy, thrown in a pit, sold to slaves, thrown in prison for something he didn't do, forgotten. All this negative, negative stuff that happened in, her, in his life. Joseph remained focused on the good that God was doing. He remained focused on his relationship with Jehovah God, and he knew without a shadow of doubt that his God was sovereign and his God would reign. I want to share something with you. Good days came to him. Amen? His family was reunited. His father was reunited. People's lives were saved by Joseph's being obedient to God. He was just a small part of that. Israel was moved to Egypt. Egypt became part of the, Israelites became part of the slavery. They were removed from there and headed to the promised land. It was a much bigger picture for Joseph. He didn't know any of that. All he knew was he was supposed to be faithful in the moment that he was in. And because he was, God used him to put other things in place that many years later, were blessed. Good came to Israel. And it started with God's plan. And it, it will end with God's plan. Every one of us as believers in Jesus Christ, if we truly want to be pleasing to God, then be content in the situation you're in. Find good in it. Find a way to bring light to someone. Find a way to be a positive influence. Find a way to bring hope. Find a way to share Jesus no matter what. Even if the government says you cannot do this any longer and you're under not just a, a, a threat of losing your, your orphanage, but your life. I will never stop preaching the gospel was the testimony. Find a way. Some of you here right now, some of you online, have been through the major trials here lately. God has blessed some of you to bring you to the other side. I pray that you take a moment here and reflect on where you are right now and how great days they are. Yes, you had to go through the weeds. Yes, you had to go through the trials. Yes, you had to go through all the hardship. But look about where you are now and how stronger you are, how better you are, how more grateful you are, how your life is better. Why? Because you remain faithful to the sovereign God, Jesus Christ. Stay faithful, church. Better days are ahead of us. Better days are ahead of us. Jesus knew that we would struggle, by the way. And he knew that we would need to be reminded of who he is and all that he is. So this morning... I want us to just take a moment. Luke's going to show a little short video. And one thing I want you to understand as it plays and as we go forward in this message, I'm going to ask you and everyone online to ask the Holy Spirit right now to give you encouragement through one of the I am's because every single one of us not only needs all the I am's, but some of us need a particular one today. Amen? Let's celebrate the I am's 
Jesus Christ. Jesus said very boldly, I am the resurrection. I am life. I am all things to all people. Moses said to the father, who do I say sent me? The father said, tell him I am sent you. I am all things to all people. Every one of us here are in a different place in our walk with the Lord. We're all, every one of us, including all the hundreds that watch online, and we're so grateful for every one of you. Every one of us has a different need. We're struggling in different ways. Some of us on cloud nine, top of the mountain, celebrating everything that's happening. Some of us are halfway up the mountain. Some of us don't know if we're going up or down, and some have already hit the bottom. But it's our God, Jesus Christ, that says, do you know where your help comes from? Do you know who brought you here? Do you know who's sustaining you? And by the way, do you know I have your future in my hand? Better days are ahead of us, church. Better days. I also believe tougher, more restricted being able to have to stand on a firm foundation. These kind of days are ahead of us. But as scary and evil as that may sound, better days are far, far better. And they're so much ahead of us. Heaven itself, yes, no question. But even while we're here on earth, come on, church, listen for a moment. When you find yourself obedient, when you find yourself giving God your all in all, when you realize that you, even in the situation you're in, no matter how bad and hard it may be, that you never lost focus on who God is, you will be blessed beyond your measure. You will have peace. You will have hope. And most importantly, in a world where this does not happen, you will be content. You will be grateful. And you'll be thankful. I heard it said once before, if it wasn't for the bad days... I wouldn't appreciate the good days. If it wasn't for the sickness in this world, I wouldn't appreciate the good health that I have. If it wasn't for the hardship in my life, <laughs> I just heard this the other day, if it wasn't for my grandchildren and the beauty of knowing that they are there and that I had a small part in that and knowing that hope for the future is right in front of me. Better days are ahead. In other words, yes, I am scared for Wesley at five and a half, six years old about what his world will be. But it won't stop me from equipping him and telling him over and over and over again, your God reigns, Wesley, and he's got you every day of your life, no matter what comes your way. Because I can say that from experience. Amen? Better days are ahead of us. Let's look at John 11, 1 through 15. We're not going to read it all. I'm going to paraphrase some of it. But we know this story. Mary Mag Lazarus was sick. Mary and Martha sent word to Jesus. Now a man named Lazarus who was sick, verse 11, he was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister, Martha, the Mary whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same who poured pure perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Amen. Amen. One of the first things my brother Billy and I talked about 
when the news of his diagnosis of leukemia. Billy, I don't remember the exact words, but I remember what we said. God's glory will shine through this. Even on the way home from chemo, when I guarantee he didn't feel like saying a word, we would praise God. Even when he went last week and couldn't get chemo because his blood counts were low. When I talked to him, he says, there's a reason for that. I give God the praise. Now, again, I'm not saying this to glorify Billy. I'm saying this to glorify the God that Billy loves and serves, Jesus Christ. And I can say that about many, many others. There's many of you that are going through life's trials that are staying faithful. i just here to remind you as your shepherd and as your pastor, better days are ahead. Better days, I guarantee that. Because God's word guarantees that. Even if it's heaven itself. Jesus loved Martha, verse 5, and her sister and, her, and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to the disciples, let us go back to Judah. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews were there, tried to stone you, and yet you're going back? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by the world's light. But in a, it's in a, when a person walks at night, that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell him, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. Again, the Lord knows all things. We're, we're going to take that story and we know that he went. And we went past their custom to where the Jews thought after three days the spirit would have been gone. And Jesus waited for the, to the time of the custom so that his testimony would be true and strong. And we know that Jesus cried out, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came forth in the grave clothes. Take him off, he said, because he was freed. You and I, you and I, if we want to renew our lives, if we want to stay positive, if we want to stay focused on who God is, we got to make sure all those grave cloths are off every single strand. You can't hold on to anything except God Almighty. Better days are ahead. Don't get discouraged. Don't be beaten down. Don't let Satan have a foothold of fear and doubt and worry. Pray for the strength for boldness to speak when you need to speak, to share, to give when you need to give, to share in your talents in many ways, whatever that may be. To share in joy. I had the privilege and I receive a lot of blessings firsthand because of your blessings. I had the privilege, Cindy and I, this last week to deliver two boxes of food to a mom, single mom, and two children who were absolutely hungry. And I was able to go downstairs and get peanut butter, jelly, macaroni, raviolis, pretty much everything I wanted, spaghetti with sauce. Then I went to the freezer and got three whole chickens and four packs of chicken legs. Then I gave her peppers, onions, oranges, blueberries. Walked into the house, Cindy and I, and I laid them on the table. And it's my custom just to lay down, say thank you, Jesus, and leave. We're not there for any other reason. Couldn't do it. Because one kid was on one leg and the one was on the other. How did you know I love blueberries? I said, God told me. Man, better days are ahead of us. But we're going to miss these little blessings if we allow Satan to have a foothold. Mary and Martha saw a dead brother. Jesus saw a way to demonstrate life. Mary and Martha saw heartache and pain, and it was real. Jesus saw a way to make sure everyone knew that he was life and resurrection. Mary and Martha saw despair and brokenness. Jesus saw an opportunity to give it back. 
Can we think that way, church? As a Christian, can't we honestly dwell on that? Nobody wants to go through disappointments, and nobody likes when Jesus says, not now. Let's just be real. Boy, we just love it when it's, when it's at the end, right? When, when we can say, thank you, Lord. But the Lord wants us to go through the whole entire journey. You don't think Joseph didn't want to skip the pit, the slavery, the prison to get to the second in command of all Egypt? But he didn't. And when he got to the top of the top, he was a grateful, thankful man because of the journey. I shared something in Sunday school, and I think it's kind of funny, so I'm going to share it again. You know, I'm very, very thankful for all your prayers and support in the last three months with my weight. I feel so much better. I, I have so much more energy. And I, 60 years of eating anything you want is a hard way and a hard time to break. Habit. I was shared to the Sunday school class the difference this time I'm just going to be real. Because I'm actually praying every day that the Lord will help me through that day to honor him but not giving it to my addiction. See, my addiction is acceptable. It's still addiction. It's still something that's in front of God. So for the last three months, I've been praying hard every day. And here's what I shared with my class, our class. You know, God's God. I could wake up tomorrow morning and 100 pounds, it can be gone. Just gone. I could wake up and say, where'd it go? It's gone. Because God's sovereign. But you know what the Lord wants me to do? He wants me to get on that scale and lose a half a pound and say, thank you, Jesus. Because the journey... If he took it all off, I guarantee you three days from now, I would forget to say thank you. But if he takes the rest of my life to get to where I think I need to be, I'll remember every step on the way. Every new hole, Gene Bennett. Church, disappointment, fear with God's timing is something every Christian's going to have to deal with. Because we all want to do it our way, our time, and our schedule. Let me just give you news. None of that's usually God's. He has his own way, his own time, his own purpose, and it's always to bring honor to him and to bring joy and hope to you. Stay faithful, please. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 talks about how we fail to understand that it's always God's way. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. we got to trust that the I am, the great I am, has all of our situations in his hand. Just as that sun just broke out of that cloud and lit this whole place up, amen? That's how we should be as Christians. Thank you, Jesus, right on time. Let's share the light. Let's send the message. John eleven twenty five through 27. John eleven twenty five through 27. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is is to come into the world. Jesus brought comfort, newness. Have you ever thought in your little mind what it was like, if you read the scripture a little farther where it says Lazarus was sitting at a meal? kind of conversation you might have with your brother about what just happened. 
Let me share something with you, and this ain't something new. I heard it yesterday, and I'm going to share it again now. That's exactly what we should all be doing. Because the day you asked Jesus Christ in your life, the same miracle was given to you. You were pulled from the pit of hell, given new life, placed in the hands of Jesus Christ for all eternity. You were raised from the dead. So I guess we don't have to wonder what Lazarus said. We should be saying the same. We really should. How you doing, Danny? I'm great. God gave me a whole new purpose in life. What can I? What can, we, what can God do for you today? How better our world would be if we all did that, including me. So bottom line is this. Jesus is our resurrection of life. He's willing and ready to restore any broken souls, heal any hearts, take away any disease, and to bring all things new in your life, to bring honor to the Father, and to bring glory and joy to you. Jesus is ready to take away our fears, our anger, our addictions, our pains, our sufferings, our hurts. He's willing to replace that with eternal life filled with joy, peace, and hope. Jesus also has ordered our tombs to open as believers and told them grave clothes to get off of us. Jesus allow hurts and dis- misfortunes to come in our lives so that we will have a stronger, better life, more focused on him. It doesn't take long to look around and honestly to realize better days aren't just ahead of us. Church, better days are right here, right now. We have it. We're blessed. We might have some aggravations and some hassles and some weeds popping up here and there. Thank God we can still pull them or at least hire somebody to pull them. Amen. I like the second part better. But let me just leave one more word of encouragement because this really has been heavy on my heart. So please hear this. I don't know who I'm speaking to that needs to hear this, but it's been on my heart for two weeks heavy. So everyone online and everyone here, listen, please. Please never forget when your prayers have been answered to stay focused. Stay grateful. Don't stop coming to church just because your prayer was answered. Don't stop praising God and worshiping God and being the light in your home because you've been healed. Don't stop shouting to God from the top of your rooftop just because your children's prayers have been answered, that your heartbroken prayers that you've prayed on your knees over and over in fear and tears rolling down your face and God touched you and blessed you. And sure, we'll be grateful for a week or two, maybe a month or two if we're really focused. I want to encourage every one of us here today and everyone online, every one of you whose prayers have been answered, never stop worshiping, growing, and sharing the victories that God has given in your life. Because the worst thing we can do is allow Satan to say, wow, that's over, let's move on. Because you know what? The Lord will say to you, dead up, straight up, no, it's not over. Let me teach you again. Let me show you again. Church, we cannot forget the blessings, the tears, the fears that God took away by stop worshiping, by stop going to church, by stop paying your tithes. You know, when we're seriously in trouble and everything's falling apart, we'll put our tithes in, we'll sing, we'll greet people at the door, we'll hand out food, we'll clean the windows, we'll do whatever it takes, we'll clean the food shed, we'll go out and we'll worship and we'll hand out tracts, we'll do whatever it takes because we want the Lord to look down upon us in a fair and in a good manner. And when the Lord's gracious enough to, to work it all out for you, the worst thing we can do is brush it aside. God stopped the universe for you for a moment. For me. And he answered your prayer from the throne of God. And what did he ask him for return? Just like Jesus said to the disciples at the Lord's Supper. Do this in remembrance to me because he knew we'd forget. Let's never forget 
If anything else, let's worship harder, more diligently, and let's share the gospel. Easter is coming really soon and really fast. Jesus, I believe, is coming back very soon. I'm not here to tell you he's coming tomorrow, even the angel. I don't know. But I know what the word says. I know what the book says. And I know every day it seems like something's getting checked off. Amen. We got to be more urgent and diligent about sending the light, sharing the light, and being the light. There's no reason why we can't put an hour away every Sunday to worship God. There is absolutely no reason for that. None. I don't mean online, in person, whatever it is. It might be in your backyard in the swing. But we must and need to worship God. I'm not saying vacations, illnesses. That's all. Everybody deserves a week off. Everybody deserves family time. I believe God honors that. I believe every one of us once in a while just need a a, a, a me and the Lord weekend. I'm not saying that. I'm talking about the attitude of the heart. Amen. The attitude of the heart. Nothing should matter more than being grateful and thankful to one that gave us all. Because not only is greater days ahead of us, once again, church, greater days are right now. We're blessed. So when you look at the news next time, and you see all the horror, innocent, Beautiful lives being destroyed for nothing. Lives on both sides being destroyed for nothing because of evil. Don't be discouraged. Don't be broken down. Be grateful you're here where you are right now. In a land where you still can share the gospel of Jesus Christ. In a land where you can still preach on a corner if you want. In a land where food is abundant everywhere if you look for it. In a land that's still blessed. I pray that America will always honor and support Israel and find their way to back to God. But in the meantime, how are they going to hear the message if it isn't preached, if it isn't shared? Share your story. Share your story. Amen? God is so good. I am so grateful to the Lord for everything. I just want you to know one thing. Truth will always be preached from this pulpit, so I have to tell you this. When I preach these things and share this to you, I'm speaking to myself just as much as I am to you. Because you don't think I don't get discouraged? That I don't get tired of fighting? that I don't look at my children and, and just cry, that I don't hold Wesley in fear about what tomorrow is. But you know what I'm so proud of? They are getting shorter and shorter until God is. I realize God's got this. I can't wait for the day where they don't happen at all. I'm talking about the thoughts and the fears. So pray for me as I pray for you. Let's remind ourselves over and over again. Better days are ahead of us. And better days are right now. Share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're just going to pray. We're not going to sing that last song because I want to pray for us as a church. Larry made a point very clear, and I felt the same thing in my heart after he said it. We have been given a responsibility and a privilege of sharing the gospel around the world. Luke can pull up at any time. He can't tell you that Megan's watching it, but he can tell me that someone in Africa or someone in Texas or someone in California. And we always get blown away, the deacons and us, when we look at the spread of the gospel from this little church. But I also can't go to the post office without someone saying something about this good little church. I also can't go down the street to the market or to Poolsville without someone saying something and asking for prayer because they know this is a praying church. We've been given the privilege to share the gospel, to send a light at home, 
and abroad. Let's be faithful. Let's be found faithful. We're getting up to a time when it, we're going to be looking at events and things that we do and classes that we teach. I've asked Larry this morning to pray about teaching the children downstairs where he has more time and, and can be more, um, take a slower approach about um, what is it you were, you were teaching? I'm sorry, I'm going brain. Covenant, sorry, I couldn't think of the word. Lord, forgive me. Because I want our kids to know that. So here's a, a man that's saying, or a person that's saying, I want to teach this. I have a burden for this. My first response was then let's set up a time during Sunday school or children's time downstairs where you have time and let's make sure they know what the covenants are to build their faith. Maybe you you want to teach about struggling in marriage or struggling in finances or or whatever. We We need to be... We need to be available to whatever God's asking you to do. But the most important thing we can do is be faithful. Amen? I love every one of you, and I'm proud to be your pastor. Better days are ahead of us. God is opening many doors. I pray we always will be faithful to go through. Thank you. Lord, I pray even now that you'll use this church of yours. It's not ours. We're your children. We're your people. This is your church. Lord, just like the pastor said in Ukraine when the soldiers' tanks, the Russian tanks, shot missiles into the church building and were laughing. The pastor stood there and he pointed to the children that were walking up the street that the soldiers did let leave the church building before they blew it up. And the pastor boldly says, I don't know why you're laughing. You just blew up a building. The church is walking up the street. I say that for this reason. God's buildings, God's house of sanctuaries are holy. The refuge, place of refuge. But it's the spirit that moves. It's the presence of God that moves. And I'm glad that and thankful, Lord, that you've been moving in this facility of yours, this building of yours for 150 years. May we be found faithful to the very day you call us from home, to the day you break that sky and call all your children home. May we be found still faithful of sending the light. Thank you for this door in Cuba that you opened. Pray for, pray for my brother there. Thank you for the family in Pakistan and every other country, county, and state that you send your word. May we be found faithful to be appreciative to every person online and every single person here in the pews. Lord, we love you. We thank you. Use us like never before. And we will always be humble and give you the glory. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Enjoy your day. Thank you for all things. And remember, Next week in your bulletin will be everything about Easter. So you don't have to worry about what was said. It will be all spelled out for you. Amen. Have a great day. Megan, you and Linda did great. Linda was very nice.